Hey geeks and gamers, great news, my Steam Deck has finally arrived and here it is in all its glory. In this video I'm going to show you the perfect setup of a Steam Deck, tons of tips and tricks and how to get rid of Steam input interfering in docked mode when using a mouse and keyboard. Let's get cracking, roll the intro. Alright, before we go through the setup process, let's quickly talk about options and tech specs. If you're not interested in technical details or already own a Steam Deck, you can skip this part. The Steam Deck can only be obtained from the Steam website and is still on pre-order, so expect some waiting time before yours will get shipped. Three variants are available. The main difference is the storage capacity, with the cheapest tier only offering a 64GB eMMC drive. The middle tier, which I went for, offers a real 265GB NVMe drive and the top tier offers a whopping 512GB drive. Plus, the screen features an anti-reflective glass. For me, the up price to the top tier was not worth it, as all Steam Decks support microSD cards to bump up the storage and I did not plan on playing outside in the bright sunlight. But I at least wanted a real NVMe drive. Prices displayed are current with regard to the making of the video and might of course change and they also depend on the region you are from. Ok, time for the technical details. The Steam Deck weighs 669 grams and features a 40 watt hour battery. That gives you quite some game time. The screen is a 7 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1280 by 800 pixels and it is limited to 60 Hz, which is totally fine for a handheld. Oh, and yes, it is a touch screen. The heart of the machine is a custom AMD APU featuring 4 cores and 8 threads. Based on the older Zen 2 architecture, but it has 8 of the new RDNA 2 compute units included. Memory wise, you can find 16GB of low power DDR5 RAM inside, capable of 5500 mega transfers per second. This should definitely be enough for all games the deck can handle. With regard to input and controls, the Steam Deck is nothing short of amazing. On top, around the display, you have two thumbsticks, two trackpads, a D pad, the classical A, B, X, Y buttons, and of course the touchscreen itself plus some Steam related special buttons. Furthermore, you have four trigger buttons at the front of the Steam Deck, plus volume controls and the power button. And the fun does not end here. Underneath the Steam Deck, you have four more buttons for total control. This stacks up to a total of, I have no idea how many buttons that are. Leave a number in the comment section below. Next up is the setup of the Steam Deck. If you know all about this, you can skip this part. Right after turning on the Steam Deck, you're greeted with this language selection screen, so I guess we go with English. Next up, we have to choose our time zone. I'm in Central Europe. That should be somewhere around here. Ah, there it is, isn't it? Yes. If you're in London, like you would choose GMT, but I'm in Central Europe. Next up, you choose your Wi-Fi network and then connect to it. If this screen looks weird to you, I'm just trying to cover the name of my Wi-Fi network. Sorry. Right after the successful Wi-Fi setup, you need to log into your Steam account. I will fast forward this and hide my username and password, of course. The Steam Deck then greets you with a nice screen that shows you all the buttons and what they do. Like the Steam button to access your library and settings etc etc it just it's very convenient i like it let's fast forward this nonetheless and get cracking okay here's the first problem i encountered the steam deck sometimes says it can't reach the internet it seems to disconnect from my wi-fi or go to sleep and then not reconnect but there's an easy fix for that this problem mainly or only or it seems to occur when you use a 5 gigahertz network anyway 
and it's easy to fix. Just head over to the system settings and activate the developer mode. You should now find the developer option all the way down in the left Steam menu. Head over there and disable Wi-Fi power management. It seems to be a software issue with regard to the 5 GHz networks and I'm sure they will fix it in a future update of SteamOS. Talking about updates, it's time to check for updates now that we have a stable Wi-Fi connection. Head over to the system settings and search for updates. Here we go, it found something. Let's hit that apply button and it wants a fresh restart. Okay, let's do it. And by the magic of filmmaking, we are back in SteamOS. The update took some minutes, but I fast forwarded this part. Okay, let's install an SD card to bump up our storage. After inserting the SD card, a small SD card icon will pop up at the top of the screen. So you know, the device recognized your card. Head over to the systems menu and format your card. It's always good with a new card to format it in the machine, system, camera, whatever device um, you're going to use it in. With my 256 GB SD card, this process took quite some time. Let's fast forward. Now that we have two storage options available, namely our built-in SSD and the newly added SD card, you might wonder how to select the installation target for games and how to manage your storage. Head over to the storage settings. You can see our two storage options at the top of the page and the games installed on each when switching between them. The one with the star is the default one where future games will be installed to. With the X button you can select which one should be your default drive. Unfortunately, SteamOS does not ask you where to install a game to when hitting that install button. But no worries, you can easily move installed games from one drive to another. Let's say I accidentally installed the forest to the SD card, but I want all bigger titles on the SSD for faster loading times. All you have to do is move down to the game that is on the wrong drive, press the Y button and choose the destination drive. Bam! Moved! And now for something really important that you definitely want to do and set up. A pin required to unlock the Steam Deck. Just like on your phone. You know, there's quite a lot of personal data on the device, including your payment options, Steam credentials, whatever. If you lose the device or it gets stolen, you might be in trouble. So let's secure it. Head over to the security settings and activate the lock screen. It will ask you for a 6 digits PIN when activating one of the three options. I recommend to make the PIN mandatory for all three options. The numbers correspond to buttons on the Steam Deck, so you can either remember the number combination or the button sequence. Very convenient if you ask me. And here is another super awesome feature of the Steam Deck. Tons of button shortcuts to make it easier to handle games especially on the small screen. All you need to do in order to get this overview is hold down the Steam button for some seconds. You can read this list on your own, but one of my favorite features is the screen magnifier. You get this by pressing the Steam button plus the L1 trigger. Let me show you. Especially in games with fine details or text, things might be hard to figure out on the small screen. By activating the magnifier, you get an enlarged view of a portion of the screen. You can then move around the viewport with the right thumbstick. Easy, isn't it? Okay, let's. Due to some time constraints, we have to handle all things with regard to the docked Steam Deck and the desktop mode in the next video. You definitely should subscribe, as we're going also to fix the keyboard mouse input issue when docking the Steam Deck, and it insists on still mapping your controls to the decks, buttons and joysticks literally blocking your mouse or disabling it completely. Furthermore, we are going to test out tons of games, run benchmarks and install a better Proton layer. So, like this video, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on the next one. Alpha, over and out. Mm -hmm.